My name is John Rossitti and I've been a teacher here at E.O. Crosley since 1994-95, which means this is my 20th year here. Uh, and I've been coaching um, at E.O. Crosley, the rowing program, since then. As soon as I came here, I started with the rowing program. I was introduced to rowing actually in high school. I was participating in a variety of different sports, primarily the basketball team at that time. And then the rowing coaches kept bugging me to come out for the rowing team. So I, um, after our basketball season was done, uh, end of, well, beginning of March, I went out and started training with the rowing team, and um, I enjoyed it. It was a fun team, it was a co-ed team, so it was a little different than basketball. And we did pretty well in our first year, our first race. In those days, they had novice races, so I was in a novice men's four, and we won a bronze medal my first year. So anytime you have success, it usually motivates you to continue. Rowing, because it's an endurance sport, it's essentially um, a year-round sport. So E.O. Crosley works closely with the club rowing. So um, the high school season runs primarily from November 1st to the national championships, which are typically the end of May or beginning of June. And then the months outside of the high school season is the club season. So most of our high achieving rowers row high school and club. So with those two combinations, typically what happens is a rower row, uh, races in the spring for the school program here at Crosley in April and May. Um, they get a little bit of downtime in June as they finish off their school year. Then towards the end of June, once they're done their school year, they kick up again and uh, race, row and race in July and partway through August. Take a few weeks off in August. Then they participate in the fall club program in September and October. And then once that's done, uh, November, December, January, February, March, they train indoors with the high school rowing program. And then we, as we, I mentioned, they race in April and May. So the actual training is, um, one of our primary training tools is the ergometer. Um, which is uh, essentially an indoor rowing sh machine. It's the closest thing that comes to mimicking indoor rowing. So um, in the winter training, um, we focus on a, on a few different areas. We focus on cardio development, um, we focus on strength development, and we focus on uh, core, is basically the three main areas. And as part of that, in terms of the cardio, They'll probably do uh, two-thirds of their cardio minutes on the erg, and the other third they'll cross-train, which is typically cycling, treadmill, those types of you know, apparatus. And then uh, in terms of strength training, of course, they're in the weight room, lifting weights. And then with core workout, there's a, there, they do daily core for about 15, 20 minutes, which is designed to develop and strengthen their midsection. The winters can be tough, right, because it's a long time and what you're working towards is a number of months off. So I think what, one of the things that helps our athletes be motivated in the winter is there's some competitions in the winter. So there's a bit of an indoor ergometer uh, competition circuit that comes up in February and March. So it gives them something to work towards, it gives them something to set goals, it gives them something to compare themselves to other athletes. On a little picture scale, I think there's um, the nice thing about training individually but collectively is there's friendships that develop. It is co-ed, so there's it's not an a all guys team or all girls team, so there's a very social atmosphere to their training. So there's a combination of work and play going on, and so I think it's um, I think that often inspires them. The older I get, the more I appreciate the lessons learned in this sport, and it's probably true of a lot of sports, you know, where lessons are learned. I mean, I think the, the athletic field, whatever that sport is, is a great classroom, um, and there is, there is a lot of realness to it that sometimes we don't get in the protected classroom that we teach in day in, day out. So I'm always impressed by, and probably as I get older, even more impressed by the rowers and not only the work, but the perseverance, the stick to itiveness. And I, I think, you know, through all of that, there's a resiliency that comes with those skills. And once you have that resiliency as part of your foundation, I think 
you're set up to be a lot more successful in life because life, like the course of a season or the course of a race, has its ups and downs. No one's going to avoid the downs. So it's having the, the what we like to call the tools for the toolkit, I guess, of life to be able to manage those down moments. Again, I've been an educator for 25 years and I thoroughly enjoy my time in the classroom and the courses I teach. And I think being a coach is one of the greatest opportunities to, to be an educator. Um, I talked a little earlier about how the, the athletic classroom is as much value as the academic classroom. And so as an educator, which I take great pride in, I get excited about my work in the classroom still, but I get very excited about my work on the athletic field or on the rowing course uh, because there's just so many incredible things that happen for young people and it's just, it's just really inspiring to watch sort of humans evolve and develop in front of you. It's, it's very, very fulfilling.